A very good afternoon and welcome to the session on the topic role of ultrasound in infertility. We are glad to have Dr. Meenal Chidgupkar among us today to help us understand the topic. The doctor will help us understand more about this in the session today and also all the important details related to the topic. So if you have any doubts, any questions, put that on the comment box and our doctor will take all your questions by the last of the session. So stay tuned till the last of the session. Doctor, you have the stage now. Thank you. My today's topic is role of ultrasound in infertility. Uh, I'm Dr. Meenal Chidgupkar, Senior IVF Consultant, Apollo Fertility, Solab. Ultrasound has become the utmost important uh, way to uh, assess so many things in male and female partners in the evaluation of infertility. So uh, actually it is to say the ultrasound has become the third eye of gynecologist and also the infertility specialist. So the importance of ultrasound starts from beginning itself. Means basically when couple comes to us for the infertility evaluation that from that very point the role of ultrasound starts. So when couple comes to us, we have to understand that uh, what is the exact problem? What is the fertility quotient of that patient? Yes, certain investigations are done, such as her all viral markers, her uh, hormonal status, then her any uh, metabolic problems related to female, all we check. We check her age and since how many years she is married and basically it is a primary infertility or secondary infertility, how many years of infertility she is having. And the same way as I have discussed in few of our prior lectures that we always take male and female together. We do the couple evaluation because it is proven that infertility is like 50-50% like almost 40% male are involved, 40% females are involved and 20% of cases it is unexplained that and sometimes both are involved. So we have to do all investigations and this uh, various tools which we use such as ultrasound for both the partners. So when patients come to us initially for the infertility evaluation, we have to understand what is the female factor in that? So we check her investigations which she has done and then on day two, we take her for the ultrasound. What we are going to look in the ultrasound on day two? Because on day two, we are going to see her antral follicle count. Antral follicular count gives us idea that if she falls in polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, of course, along with her history, if she has irregular cycles and other factors which contribute to the diagnosis of polycystic ovaries. Also, we have to see how many antral follicle count we can see per ovary. If the antral follicle count in single ovary is going less than 5 or it is very low, then we can understand it is a, a ovarian failure. It can be premature according to the age of the patient and then we can analyze what could be her uh, status when we give ovulation induction to those patients. So even for the decision of which drugs we have to give to the patient, we have to do ultrasound and see this antral follicle count. Sometimes we even check the ovarian vessel flow with the Doppler. So the ultrasound comes, which is very important in fertility, is like it has Doppler, 3D ultrasound, that's volume ultrasound, and this uh, transvaginal probe, which gives a very uh, precise idea of the pelvis. So when we see uh, the pelvis in day two of ultrasound, we have to see other important things that also contribute 
to this infertility. So just sometimes we can diagnose fibroids in the uterus. Sometimes we can see polyps, which is causing infertility. And uh, sometimes it is very important to understand if uh, what is the thickness of this uh, uterus, if it is very small or big, or it has adenomyosis. And then we have to uh, see if any other pelvic pathology or ovarian problems which are contributing to this infertility. Also, we can understand certain uh, pathologies such as endometriosis because of endometriotic cysts we can see and we can diagnose so many things on day two of ultrasound. And if on day two we could see the follicular cysts, then we have to give them medications to reduce those cysts and then only start the ovulation induction in the further cycle. So to understand all these basic things, we have to do day two scan, that is transvaginal scan and give the patient idea about their infertility evaluations. Then also there is a very important uh, way, like previously uh, HSD was very common. Now this is sonographically also we can do uh, evaluation of the follicular tubes and that also is very important for the complete understanding of the female factors. Also, uh, this ultrasound is very important in cases where uh, the male factor is involved. So, if the male factor is there and we have to see very seal, the grades of it and any other pathologies which are responsible for the male factor. So sonography is helpful for the male as well as females. The other very important area where sonography comes uh, and it has a very important role is when we start their ovulation induction. So when we give them medications, it can be oral ovulogens, like orally we give tablets to them or sometimes we give along with this oral inject oral medications the injections and sometimes according to their hormonal status we have to start injections from the starting itself so when we are giving the injectables for the development of uh, follicles we have to check the ovaries very consistently every two to three days and uh, we have to understand how they are responding so when the ovaries are, you know, uh, ovarian size uh, is in increasing, the follicles are increasing very fast, we have to be very careful. Sometimes in polycystic ovaries also, when we give tablets, there is a no development, but when we start injections, there is a rapid development and there is a multifollicular state also. So whenever we start any ovulation induction drugs, we should be doing sonography of that patient very religiously and very frequently to understand how she is responding to those medications. So whenever the whenever the couple goes to doctors and then they start any medications, doctor calls them every two to three days or five days to understand how the follicle is growing. So the, this ovulation induction can have with the natural intercourse or doctors can start for IUI that is intrauterine insemination for those patients. So when they give you the date for the IUI, so for that also this ultrasound is very important and when uh, after a certain time when the follicle size reaches 18 to 20 millimeter that time we have to see other parameters in the ovaries and the blood flow and uh, certain markers of Doppler and accordingly we give the date. We also see that uh, how it is, when it is going to rupture if we find with certain hormonal things that it is going to rupture earlier, we uh, can do double IUI or if it is not like that, then we can do a single IUI and give good results to the patients. Then uh, when uh, 
this IUI and uh, ovulation induction with natural methods, this time it is important. The same way the ultrasound is very important when it is IVF case. IVF ICSI cases, when we start injections to the patient, that also higher injections and uh, we have to see that those injections are with those injections the patient is responding or not we have to constantly check on the ultrasound of those patient and see the for how the follicles are developing after a certain time we have to start another injection which will hold those follicles and it will not allow the follicles to rupture that is antagonist usually in many ivf cycles we are following the antagonist protocol and in these scenarios when when to start antagonist also we have to see ultrasound and confirm the antagonist protocol uh, the day when we, get, we can start if it is a fixed or the variable day then we have to decide accordingly then when to stop when to when we decide when we can give the trigger to the patient that also a very important uh, criteria we have to follow and we have to see on ultrasound that if it is possibly uh, how many follicles are going more than 17 18 millimeters and how are the uh, other non dominant follicle stage and the estrogen level and here also sonography plays a very important role then the sonography comes in picture when we are going for uh, embryo transfer. So embryo transfer can be done in the fresh cycle or in the frozen cycle. In fresh cycle also when we are giving uh, trigger, that time we see what is the endometrial thickness. And on the day of pickup, we check the endometrial thickness, we check the progesterone, that is one hormone, which is very important. If everything is okay and endometrial thickness more than 7 to 7.5 millimeters, we can start progesterone injections and decide for the endometrial transfer. So, and in frozen cycles, we are uh, externally stimulating this endometrium it can be down regulated first we down regulate the ovaries and then start the medications or sometimes we can do in the day two cycles when we analyze and see everything is in a proper uh, range hormones are in proper range at that time we can slowly start the estrogen progesterone uh, according to day of the cycle and till we get a good endometrium the blood supply in that subendometrial and endometrial area and uh, if it is good quality three distinct uh, spaces can be seen properly then we can decide for the transfer date and we can start progesterone injections or suppositories or gels or tablets and then we can decide for the transfer so in this way in all aspect of infertility this ultrasound is playing very very important role also in certain cases this we don't call as infertility but uh, when there is a multiple uh, like abortions then recurrent uh, pregnancy failures that time also we have to understand if there is any if such cases as are there that has to also be treated into this fertility evaluation and that time also on ultrasound we can see some uh, uterine malformations because when there is a multiple pregnancy failures that can be many reasons and many of the cases we can see there is some uterine abnormality which is causing this it can be cervical dystocia it can be uh, then uterine malformation in terms of double uterus or the septum that all things uh, we could understand with ultrasound and it can be treated very well so when the septum is there we can go for hysteroscopy remove the septum if the polyp is there we can remove the polyp 
and uh, we can do this uh, fundal scratching which is experimental but still it has given a very good uh, results in certain patients so all these factors and all these uh, different problems in infertility which it which comes we can analyze with the help of this ultrasound and even we get the first information that the sac is formed or not after the ET is positive we type CG positive with the ultrasound itself so uh, my friends this ultrasound is very important in overall gynecology also and also in infertility scenarios so this this is what I really wanted to share with you with this uh, higher quality ultrasound we can find out many things nowadays the volume probes have come which are giving a very good idea about the antral follicle count the uterine structures uterine abnormalities then any pelvic abnormalities and this all will definitely improve the infertility scenarios and help doctor and patients for their future infertility assessment and treatment so my friends i hope you have understood the basics of uh, this ultrasound in infertility namaste